Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, we're gonna to show you how to set the ignition timing on your two-stroke dirt bike. Setting the ignition timing on your two-stroke dirt bike is something that often gets overlooked. Now, maybe you're in here doing a bottom end rebuild, you had the stator plate off, and you just mounted it back up in its original location. The bike is obviously going to run fine, but if you want to get the best performance out of your bike, you want to set the ignition timing. Now, with these bikes, some of them have some adjustability, and you can slightly change the power characteristics of the bike. We'll talk about that more when we're in there making the adjustments, but just be aware of that. Other bikes, they have different sizes of base gaskets. So if you used a different size base gasket, you definitely need to get your ignition timing set up. With this, there's three common methods to do it. We're gonna show you all three methods, and that way you can get this job done on just about any two-stroke dirt bike. The tools you need to get this job done will depend on what bike you have. Right here, we have the Motion Pro two-stroke timing kit. This works for the liquid cooled bikes, but if you have an air cooled bike, you can get a separate adapter for that. Now, if you have a KTM or Husqvarna dirt bike, then you're gonna use the Tusk decking and timing tool. And some bikes aren't gonna use either of these tools. So check your model specific service manual for that information. Other than that, we're just gonna use some common hand tools, some safety glasses and rags. Now, some of the stator plates use a number three Phillips and they can be kind of stubborn to get out sometimes, so you may need an impact driver for that. The first thing you want to do is check your model specific service manual. Some bikes don't have any adjustment at all for ignition timing, but with that being said, we're going to start by talking about the KTM and Husqvarna two-stroke dirt bikes. So some of the bigger bikes, they're not going to have any adjustment, but your smaller bikes like your 65s, 85s, and 105s will. So with that, you're going to do your X measurement first, and all that means is you're going to be selecting the correct base gasket. You use a decking and timing tool to do that. These ones are from Tusk. Once you have the correct base gasket, you can go ahead and set the ignition timing. All you have to do is use the end of the tool that it has a little spot where it sticks out. You set that down into the cylinder, and when you rotate the flywheel in its normal direction of rotation, when the piston comes up and lightly greets that tool, it's in the correct spot. So you stop right there, and then check your timing marks. So you're gonna look at the timing mark on that flywheel and compare it to the mark on that stator plate. Now, if those two don't line up, you loosen, typically it's gonna be three bolts on that stator plate, loosen them up, line up your marks, and then tighten those bolts back down. And just make sure that the flywheel didn't move while you rotated the stator base plate. And that's how you do this on your KTM and Husqvarna two-stroke dirt bikes. And since this is typically done during a top-end rebuild on those bikes, if you need help getting through that rebuild process, we do have a couple different videos on that, so be sure to check those out. Now for the Japanese bikes, we're gonna show you a couple of common ways to make this adjustment. We're gonna start with a 2006 YZ250. Now with this, we're gonna show you the dial indicator way to set this up. So we went ahead, we removed our fuel tank and our left side engine cover. So now we're gonna remove the spark plug to help get the dial indicator set up, you want to line up your timing marks on the magneto and the timing mark on your stator plate. Once those are lined up, you can set up your gauge. From here, we're going to take the indicator base and screw that into our spark plug hole. And the stuff we're setting up right now, this is just out of that Motion Pro timing kit. Now we've got our dial indicator and you can see this plunger is not going to reach. So I'm going to screw this end off. and. I'm gonna put an extension in there. Now that we've added our extension, we need to make sure it's the right length. Now there's two things that can happen is if you install the gauge into this base and you rotate the flywheel and nothing happens with that needle, then you, know you need to add length to the plunger. But on the other hand, if this is in here and the flywheel's pushing the gauge up and the plunger is bottoming out, then you need a shorter extension on the plunger. But with this, you know, we do have some adjustable range in this base. So even though ours, ours bottoms out right there, what we could do is raise the gauge up until it's in the middle of the range, then tighten down the set screw. Since we lined up our timing marks, our piston is just before top dead center. Now we need to find top dead center. So from here, what you wanna do 
I'm going to rotate the flywheel counterclockwise until it peaks out. So we just passed top dead center. So that highest point, that's exactly what we want to find right now. So we're going to zero the gauge. So we have another set screw right here. I'm going to loosen that up. Zero the gauge with the needle. Once you have your gauge zeroed out, we need to get the piston in the correct position. So the piston is at its highest point right now and we need it to drop 0.18 millimeters. So we're just gonna rotate this magneto clockwise just a little bit until this drops 0.18 millimeters. This spec might be different from your bike, so that's why you always wanna refer to your manual. But once you're at the correct measurement, you wanna check the timing marks on your flywheel and that stator plate. If they don't line up, loosen the mounting bolts for the stator plate, line the marks up, and then tighten the stator plate bolts down. So right here, we're looking at the timing mark on our stator base plate versus that little mark or that triangle on our engine case half that helps you line this up initially. And as you can see, after we use the dial indicator, it's actually a little bit off. I thought it would be a little bit closer to that, but that's the whole reason we're using the dial indicator. This is for the person that wants things to be exact. Now moving on, we're gonna show you another common way to set your ignition timing. This is a 2003 KX250, and you'll see on the stator base plate, we have three timing marks and one timing mark on the crankcase half right here at the top. So on this one, all you have to do, you're gonna loosen up the three mounting bolts on that stator base plate, and then you're gonna line up the center mark on your three marks on the base plate. The center one's gonna line up with the mark on the crankcase half. If you have this style of ignition timing adjuster on your bike, this clearly is the easiest one to get set up correctly. On this bike, we have two more timing marks and those just indicate the same range of adjustability on the stator plate. So earlier in the video, I mentioned that we would talk about the ignition timing and how it would affect the power of your bike. Now, when you're changing your ignition timing, keep in mind you want to complement any mods that you have done to your bike, whether it be mods that help the mid-range or mods that help the top end. Now, if you wanna help the mid-range and have a harder hit, then what you can do is turn the stator base plate clockwise and you can go as far as you want as long as this mark in the base plate doesn't pass that timing mark in the case half. Now, if you get more of a mid-range hit, you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of over rev. On the other hand, if you want more over rev, you can turn the stator base plate counterclockwise as far as you want as long as this mark on the right doesn't pass the mark in the crankcase half. When you do that, again, it's gonna give you over rev and it's gonna take a little bit of punch away from that mid range. Now, this isn't gonna have a huge effect on your power, but it will be noticeable. And again, you wanna to try to complement any mods you have. So with this bike, what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna advance this ignition timing and try to get a little more mid range punch. Once you have your ignition timing set, all you need to do is reinstall any parts that you removed. And for us, since we made some adjustments, we're gonna go out and try them and make sure we're happy with them. Now, if you need any of the tools we use today to set your ignition timing, you can find those on our website. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this, or maybe you need some rebuild videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel because that's where you're gonna find them. Thanks for watching.